It is another evening of stormy conditions across central and eastern Kentucky. The latest on the severe weather and flash flood threats coming up. Flash flooding washes away homes in Johnson County, killing at least two people and leaving six others missing. We're live with a look at the devastation. This bridge is just one indication of how strong the flash flooding was here in Rowan County. We'll show you how folks here are cleaning up today. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon. We're tracking more strong storms moving into the region this afternoon. And they could bring damaging winds, flooding rains, even hail. Let's go right now to our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey, for an update on this WKYT first alert severe weather day. Yes, yeah, severe thunderstorm watch is out for northern Kentucky, guys. This line of thunderstorms, though, getting ready to push out of this watch. And a new watch is going to be issued at some point for central and eastern Kentucky. But again, Give folks a big heads up. Get that watch out. Here we go. Flash flood watch that is out for all of central and eastern Kentucky during this time as well. Northern Kentucky, that line continues to develop back toward the west into sections of Grant County. That is getting ready now to cross into Harrison County. Strongest part of the line, though, continues to be across the northeastern part of the state. And I look at this line, I think same thoughts I had with the line yesterday, with the line last night damaging winds, flooding rains. Damaging winds, flooding rains. It's the same old song and dance. So here we go with that thunderstorm complex. Actually, two little thunderstorm complexes. One Falmouth over into Williamstown and another one around the Covington area. Both of those are dropping in. So Cynthiana, Sadieville, keep an eye on those storms. They're beginning to increase. Now look at the increase in lightning. And if you've watched this over the past few days, we're saying when you look at Defender here, you see the increase in lightning. Good indicator that that storm is A, becoming stronger, and B, Packing torrential rains. Flash flooding is likely to develop again as this line drops its way on in from north to south across the eastern part of Kentucky, maybe into parts of the bluegrass region as well. An additional, I'm not going to be surprised here if I don't hear some reports for areas along and east of 75, especially of another two or three inches of rain coming from this line of thunderstorms that is dropping in from northwest to southeast. If some of these areas get two to three inches of rain, it is all over again. We may have another significant flash flood event somewhere across the eastern half of Kentucky over the next three or four hours. So, again, you got to keep a very close eye on those creeks and streams. All of this around a big area of low pressure that is off to our northeast. So, we actually have a cold front that is across central and eastern Kentucky that will continue to swing its way on through the area as the evening goes on. So, this round of severe thunderstorms, again, mainly. 6 to 11 o'clock, depending on exactly where you are. Damaging winds, hail, a possibility and actually a likelihood with these storms. But guys, same old song and dance. The flash flood threat continues to be absolutely through the roof, especially along and east of Interstate 75. Keep a very close eye on water levels as those storms move back in. And of course, that's what we're here for as we go through the evening to track the storms into the uh, hardest hit areas, especially. Chris, thank you. Well, today we're seeing the pictures. They are just devastating, showing what these storms did. Heavy rains caused widespread flooding in Johnson County, especially in the communities of Staffordsville, Redbush, and Flat Gap. Two people have died. Several are still missing. Entire homes were washed away. WKYT's Amber Philpott begins our first alert weather team coverage live in Johnson County with the latest on the situation. Amber. Sam, Jennifer, you talked about those entire homes being washed away. Well, just a short time ago, the state police captain told us that in the Kentucky 172 area alone, 60 homes have been destroyed. Probably the saddest news, though, coming today. We learned that there are now two fatalities, one last night and just today. An elderly woman was found in the Flat Gap area. Now, crews, they are up against the elements as the search for the missing still goes on. That number stands right now at six. Search dogs are out. KSP says this is not just a recovery effort, although there are cadaver dogs out as well. Uh, they are, though, in a race against the clock to locate those missing with a good outcome. The longer that we go without having contact with people who are as yet unaccounted for, uh, it doesn't bode well as far as optimism goes. And I think that's with any one of these types of disasters that we run into. Uh, however, we're not uh, we're not treating this with uh, you know as a STRICTLY A RECOVERY THING AT THIS POINT. AND HE 
he talked about optimism, and of course that optimism does get lower as the hours go on, but certainly a lot of people still hopeful here in this community. I want to bring in WKYT's Mike Linden. He's going to join me now. He had a chance to tour some of the damage out there on the ground. Of course, these areas restricted at this point to anyone else, but you got to go in with some crews. It slowly became something that I've just never seen before in my entire life, and I actually spoke with one family that say when they came home, that was right at the moment where they lost their home. I never expected it. Alicia Clark and her husband have lived at the Pennington Mobile Home Park for 15 years. She says in the past, flooding has never been as devastating as what she came home to last night. We've seen thunderstorms and thunderstorms, and it's always got to our next door neighbors, and it's just got to our buildings. But I never thought it would get to her home. When Clark and her husband made it back to the mobile home park, they helplessly watched as their home and cars washed away. I just seen my car, the back end, just raise up and then it would go down and the house was still standing. And then whenever the trailers from the trailer park came, it just slid it on out. Their home washed more than 100 feet down the creek before it smashed into their neighbor's home. Clark says she's learned a lot about the power of Mother Nature in the past 24 hours. I'm just glad that we're alive and our kids are all right. Wow, it is pretty incredible to think that she is still so very positive. There's a little boy there in that video. He kind of stole your heart today. That's right. That little boy was Alicia's nephew, and uh, his mother tells me that ever since they got there this morning to help her mm -hmm. clean up, that he's just been following her around. He followed me around, Aww. being sure to point things out. and. It's, it's just amazing to see this family come together in this dire, dire time. A bright spot when there isn't always so much. Mike Linden, right. thank you so much. Well, with hundreds of homes either damaged or destroyed, many people, they need a place to go. And the Red Cross has opened a shelter uh, to help those affected by the flooding. They opened that last night. WKYT's Kristen Kendi shows us what that group is doing to help victims. The Red Cross set up shop here last night, and they are providing shelter and hot showers to anyone who needs them. We've got everything they need. We're feeding them. We've had uh, some caterings to bring us some food in here, and uh, they uh, give them a warm place to stay, cool place to stay and uh, get them a good place to sleep. Emerson Varney drove into Paintsville Monday night with the American Red Cross. Working on just a few hours of sleep, he and volunteers at the shelter on Preston Street are tirelessly trying to help every family affected by overnight flash flooding. The heavy rain washed away roads, destroyed homes, and left many in need. Varney told us they're providing all they can to families, and they're getting a lot of help doing so from the community. People are coming in trying to bring everything to us. The people in Paintsville have absolutely went out of their way to support these people in this town. Shelter leaders told us they do not have a set time to when they're going to leave this area. They plan on staying in Paintsville for however long they're needed. In Johnson County, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Governor Steve Bashir declared a state of emergency this morning due to all this flooding. The declaration makes state resources available to local officials. Some of those resources include the Kentucky Emergency Operations Center, the National Guard, and financial assistance. Well, if you can see behind me here, it has been a flurry of activity. I'm inside the cafeteria at Johnson Central High School, and folks have been unloading all kinds of goods here this afternoon. And coming up at 5:30, we're going to show you how people are trying to. To help those that are affected here with all of this flash flooding here in Johnson County. That is the story here in Paintsville. Amber Philpott, WKYT. All right, Amber, thank you very much. Great to see so many people so quickly trying to help those folks down in Johnson County. Absolutely, and they're going to need so much help. Mm -hmm. Well, flooding hit Rowan County hard as well. As many as 60 homes there were damaged. The floodwaters even carried away cars from driveways. Our Sam Smith continues our first alert weather team coverage with a look at the damage. If you want proof of the power of yesterday's flooding, take a look at this parking lot. Now, folks that live around here say this parking lot looked like an ocean yesterday. Others describe the swollen creek as a river. They say at its highest, it was 10 feet above the roadway, flooding more than 60 homes, damaging cars and bridges. Today, cars that were carried by the floodwaters into the creek 
were towed out. Looking at the condition of this car, you can see the strength behind the floodwaters. Folks living here say they've never seen anything like this. We talked with EMS director Danny Blevins. He owns this car. His home was damaged too. We'll deal with the damage, uh, and it just goes to show you responders are not exempt from this. And we, uh, it's just, it was my turn in the barrel, you might say. I've, I've responded for years in this county and helped my neighbors, and now it's me. As you can tell, these classic cars on display in this parking lot were not exempt from the flood damage yesterday either. Earlier today, we saw several of them that needed to be towed away. In Rowan County, Sam Smith, WKYT. And there is a temporary shelter at the Carl D. Perkins Center in Moorhead. It will be open 24 hours a day for as long as there is a need. Floodwaters washed out a temporary bridge on Kentucky 52 in Lee County. The District 10 Transportation Cabinet posted these pictures on their Facebook page. They have rerouted traffic across the new bridge. Only one lane is open and being controlled by temporary signals. Viewers have been helping us cover this storm across the state. John Austin Jenkins tweeted these shots to our Chris Bailey. This is hail in the Heston community of Monroe County. The stones are golf ball size or bigger. We're always tracking storms on WKYT.com, and you can too. Use an interactive radar to zoom all the way into your neighborhood. Download the WKYT news and radar apps to keep up with the weather when you're on the go, and share your photos and video with us. Email them to eyewitness at WKYT.com or use the hashtag KYWeather. State police suspect foul play in a house fire. Investigators found 68-year-old Lawrence Sizemore's body inside a burned home on Highway 577 in Clay County yesterday morning. They've not determined a cause for Sizemore's death or the fire. An autopsy is scheduled today in Frankfort. A special honor today for a fallen Kentucky State Police Trooper. Congressman Andy Barr honored Eric Chrisman on the floor of the U.S. House today. Trooper Chrisman died in a car crash while on duty in Livingston County on June 23rd. He was from Anderson County. Trooper Chrisman gave his life while striving to preserve democracy and decency. And I thank him for his service and his devotion to his community. 64 law enforcement officers have been killed in the line of duty this year. Negotiators have reached a deal to curb Iran's nuclear program. Iran will cut 98% of its enriched uranium stockpile and two-thirds of its centrifuges. In exchange, the U.S. and U.N. would lift economic sanctions. Congress now has 60 days to review the deal. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. The state wants more children to get the HPV vaccine. A campaign launched this week will include television, radio, and print ads on the vaccine's benefits. In Kentucky, only 27% of girls ages 13 to 17 have received the recommended three doses of the vaccine. 19% of boys have received it. The state hopes to increase the vaccination rates by 25%. Black Friday is more than four months away, but the battle has already started for your holiday dollars. Both Amazon and Walmart plan to offer special deals tomorrow. Dorothy Tucker shows us how the competition can save you cash. Sunbathing at the beach on a hot summer day. The last thing these ladies want to think about? Christmas shopping. Generally, I don't usually shop until like a week or two before Christmas. But Amazon is hoping to pry consumers away from the beach with the promise of a one-day sale, July 15th, bigger than Black Friday. For some shoppers, I think it's awesome. Is this a trend? I wouldn't be surprised to see other promotions, you know, other merchants. In fact, Walmart is already offering 2,000 deals exclusively online that coincidentally begin on Wednesday, like Amazon. But unlike Amazon, Walmart officials say you don't have to join any club. Amazon deals are only available with a primetime membership, free shipping, but cost $99 a year. Well, you've got the number one brick and mortar retailer in the world going after the number two online retailer in the world, and they are not playing around. The idea of asking customers to pay extra in order to save money, that just doesn't add up for us. However, Amazon is offering a 30-day free membership trial, so Walmart is reducing its shipping from $50 to $35 for 30 days. The competition, good news for shoppers. I think it's worth checking out. Dorothy Tucker, CBS News.